Hi, and welcome back to another patch event. Last time, we looked at something called MMPC and how Microsoft is changing the way Windows talks to Intune. It's a big step that will make sure policies arrive faster and ensure that the device will check in more often, which is pretty great if you ask me. If you missed that one, you should watch it now. Or well, maybe watch this one and later on watch that episode as well. Today, we are going to look at the new future. We're going to look at the new Windows 11 25H2 future. Remove default Microsoft Store packages from the system, which is clearly seen in this picture. From the name, you'd expect it will remove all inbox store apps right away, right? You just select apps and that's it, right? But in reality, it doesn't touch anything for the current user. It only stops those Microsoft Store apps from being provisioned for newly created user accounts. So the existing accounts, they still have those Microsoft Store apps. So in this episode, we will enable that future. We are going to look how it behaves and we're going to pull apart the code in the IDA tool. And I guess I'm also going to show you how you can even extend that policy yourself by using a PowerShell script. It's just a little bit chicken and egg because we want to get rid, rid of the PowerShell script to remove the Microsoft Store apps. But unfortunately, Microsoft, this of Microsoft Future to remove them, it isn't that great because it doesn't remove anything. But we will see later on what I'm referring to. But before we get started, well, hit like, subscribe so you don't mi miss the next pet want. So if you want to try this new store app removal feature from Microsoft right now, you will need to use a group policy. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but in a couple of minutes, we will look at the CSP option. We believe that uh, will be used when Microsoft eventually adds this functionality into Intune. But I guess let's start with the GPO option and let's go legacy and open the group policy. Once we open the group policy editor, go to the computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, the app package deployment, which makes sense as well, and then select the remove default Microsoft Store packages from the system. Once you enable the policy, you will get a Microsoft curated list of inbox apps, like the Feedback Hub, Xbox Teams, Solitaire, Paint, uh, at least, all the Microsoft Inbox Store apps, not all of them, but most of them, which I think is bad, but we will discuss that later on. So for this demo, I will just remove a couple of them, the Xbox app uh, and a couple others as well. So I'm going to select them. I'm going to click uh, OK and apply. Once I apply the GPO, of a setting in the GPO, I'm going to enforce it using a GPO update. So once I put in a GPO update command, normally that policy will be forced, right? But nothing happens, nothing changes for the account that is currently logged in. And again, that's because this future of this setting only applies when a new user profile is created after the policy is enabled. So all existing users, the store apps will still be there. And well, since many of us prefer managing these kinds of settings to in Intune instead of GPO, let's first look at if there is even an option or how Microsoft is going to implement it. So what about Intune support for this future? Well, you might expect this future to be already in the settings catalog, but well, believe me, it isn't there yet. However, we spotted some clues and some hints about where it's going to head. While checking how the GPO writes the policy to the registry, we stumbled on, on something beautiful, the application management CSP list. That's where we noticed this funny entry. As you can see, device, vendor, MSFT, policy, confer, and there you have it, application management. And within that CSP node, we notice the remove default Microsoft Store packages, CSP. And well, it's present in the OS, 
but it's not, well, not yet, documented. And one thing is for sure, it's not available in Intune at the moment. Once Microsoft enables it, it should just work like the GPO option. Meaning, if you apply the policy before a new account is created, it will ensure that those Microsoft Store apps, the ones that you selected, will never get provisioned for that new user. Well, since we can't configure it to Intune yet, let's switch back and let's actually find out how it actually works when a new user logs on when we configured that setting in the GPO. Well, let's see the next one then. So to test this new Microsoft Store app removal feature, we need to create a new fresh account so the policy can take effect. Or enroll a device or a new device without pilot is the same thing, but then again, you need to configure the GPO before enrolling the device without the pilot, but well, Let's continue, right? So first off, I'm going to uh, ensure that I'm going to open the local user and groups uh, MMC snap in, and from there on just create a new test user, a test MMC demo user, set a password to ensure that everything is set up. So uh, after the user is created, right now, I can just sign out of the device and of course ensure that the GPO is configured as we have shown before and start logging in as a demo user. So the moment I start logging in as a demo user, Windows will begin creating the new user profile. During this profile creation, during this process, it will check the, uh, some register keys. So it will start with the most important one, the one that was created when we configured the policy, it will start looking at the software policies, Microsoft Windows, AppX, and remove default Microsoft Store packages. Every single store app we selected in the GPO is listed here with the value of one, which means the app needs to be re well, removed, doesn't need to be provisioned for a new user. And of course, anything we didn't select is still set to zero. So Windows will start reading that array of settings because it's one big array. And from there on, it simply skips provisioning those Microsoft Store apps for the new user account. So once the desktop appears, the selected apps are gone to maybe a few dead stop in new titles. Well, I, I've seen it happening before, so maybe it's fixed right now, but well, it can occur. Well, I guess now that we have seen it work, because I logged in, and as you can see, all the store apps that I insured of I selected in the GPO aren't here anymore, which is pretty cool if you sign in with a new user. But well, let's break down how exactly this removal, which isn't removal, happens. So let's look under the hood of this future with the IDA tool. Well. This Microsoft Store app removal feature logic lives in a DLL file, to be precise, the app X all user store DLL file. And well, I opened up I opened it with the IDA tool. Because, well, by now I assume you know, but I love looking at DLL files because they really, really tell me way more Microsoft will ever do. And that's pretty funny because I'm telling them what's happening in the DLL files or by looking at the DLL files. So if you want to do the same, looking at where DLL files for fun, well, check out the previous patch and run session in which we discussed that IDA tool, which is the perfect tool when you want to debug some policies, not some policies, some DLL files. So here's what's happening during the new user profile while looking at the DLL files. So as mentioned before, the OS will read the list of packet family names from the policy key, the one that I just showed you, in which all the store apps are listed one or zero. For each match, the, the one, it calls an internal cleanup routine that unregisters the packets from the per machine provisioning store. It moves all the stage files, stage files into a new folder that deleted all user app or user packages folder, which exists on the Windows apps. 
as you can see here. From there on, it also writes the deleted markets into a separate new app XL user store registry key, as you can see here as well. So Windows knows the block was intentional. It skips per user install because the profile hasn't got those apps yet. And if you want proof how this works, or well, if it works, you can easily spot this. Just open the Microsoft event log uh, and go to the Windows app X deployment server operational event log. And from there on, you will notice some events uh, showing up. And if I'm not mistaken, event three to zero, or no, three to seven uh, lists all the blocked packages. And well, the nice part, I think it's a nice part because you're not stuck with Microsoft predefined with the Microsoft predefined list because with a PowerShell script, yes, so yeah, the chicken and egg PowerShell script or the policy. With a PowerShell script, you can add any package family name. You can use PowerShell to look it up to that policy registry key. And from there on, it will block it from provisioning for future or new accounts, which is even better with a PowerShell script that will create the same as the GPO or the engine policy. You can ensure that all those Microsoft Store apps, also other ones, will be blocked from provisioned for new user accounts, which is amazing. So we don't need to use a PowerShell script anymore to deploy Windows. So, well, here's a takeaway. This new future isn't going to uninstall store apps for the current user. It only blocks them from being provisioned for new accounts. But still, as I was just mentioning, it is a way cleaner option than deploying some weird deployed PowerShell scripts, which can do weird things on your device if you didn't check it. A Dunner Kruger effect, once well, someone told me. But again, if you want to extend that policy and not using an engine settings catalog or the GPO, well, you can extend it easily with creating your own PowerShell script, which is a bit weird, but well, for the full step-by-step -step and deep technical breakdown, so instead of me, of looking at me explaining it, you can read uh, the two blocks I created around this future. Well, you can find the links in the description. And well, while this is, again, a neat Windows 25 H2 future, it doesn't really handle the big picture. That's keeping your third-party apps patched and up-to-date. And that's where Pest my PC comes in. Automated third-party application patching at scale. Tested and deployed without you chasing individual updates. So book a demo and see how it works in your environment. Oh, and please don't forget, like, sub su like and subscribe. Well, see you next time. Join over 8,000 organizations that trust Patch My PC to keep 25 million devices up to date. It's secure, automatic, and built to scale. See for yourself. Click the link to book a live demo with a Patch My PC engineer now.